What's going on everybody? Welcome to a new video. This one is going to be on the top five things I think Madden really, really, really needs to patch. And so getting right into it, you see me running fake screen wheel here. And it's not so much fake screen wheel. I think fake screen wheel does need to be looked at, but it's the matching prospects of the different coverages. They're kind of broken right now. They break on the wrong people right here. Fake screen wheel against cover three. There's no reason for the outside third guy to chase the seam route, even though Ridley didn't catch the ball right there. The seam route's running right into the middle third. There's no reason for the outside third to go crashing over there. It makes it to where in a st standard cover three, you can't do shading. If you shade at all, then this happens. So you can't shade underneath to play hard flats. You can't shade to make cloud flats. You have to keep the purple zones or else that's going to happen every single time. And even if you keep the purple zones, the purple zone drops super far back to chase the wheel because the outside third's chasing the seam for no reason. Cover four, you have the middle quarter runs to the sideline to chase the wheel. This is probably the most inexcusable one. And Julio Jones is 25 yards behind everybody. So, and it, it, like I said, it's not just fake screen wheel. It's a lot of different matching concepts. Fake screen wheel is just popular because it's pretty much a one play touchdown against almost every coverage in the game if you don't know how to defend it right there. Cover two, that should happen. It, fake screen wheel is a cover two beater naturally. So I don't have a problem with that. Just the matching principles need to be looked at. Now, next up, we have the contain blitz. And so, a lot of people have been complaining about the contain blitz. I don't know if it's going to get patched. Um, I think it probably should get at least looked at. Uh, there's no reason that my guard and tackle should double team the outside defensive end and just let the cornerback come flying in untouched, as you see right there off the left edge. This is a very popular setup with a DB fire at a dollar. It's basically just, you know, baseline, whatever, spread your line, crash them down, crash them out, bring the corners in, contain. And a lot of times, one of them, it doesn't matter if you're blocking your running back, one of them's going to come in right there. Left edge once again comes in. You can block your running back and move them over to the left side. One of them usually comes in. So and it's just broken because the left guard or right guard, whichever guard, usually just does nothing. As you can see right there, both of them come in. So I think that really needs to be looked at, mainly just the offensive line logic um, and not place such a high priority on double teaming the outside threat, especially if there's another outside threat coming in on the same side right here motion the running back over to the left and you see he blocks nobody once again comes off the left side so I do think that needs to be looked at now number three is possession catch I don't know why possession catch right there you see that animation and it's like it's scripted whenever you catch the ball in a possession catch animation your receiver starts going down now Calvin Ridley's curled up in a ball going towards the ground and he gets sucked into an animation where suddenly he comes up stands up straight stretches the ball out and the corner is able to smack it out. So everything seems just very scripted with the possession catch right now. You're much better off just rat catching the ball at this point because you're not going to get sucked into that animation because the possession animation is so long. It allows for the defender to catch up and suck you into a new into a new animation that causes you to drop the ball more times than not. And so I don't have a problem with possession catch when you're in the open field and nobody's around you, but in terms of when somebody's there, you should want to possession catch because you're scared you're going to get hit and you want a higher chance of catching the ball but that's just not the case if there's people around you you're much better off not possession catching the ball at all which makes you know not much sense and so i do think possession catch does need to be looked at right there got sucked into another animation ridley was able to hold on now the fourth one and one of the most frustrating ones is and this is from my own gameplay is defenders not reacting whenever you're in position to make a play on the ball and holding the Y button. You can see right there, the ball bounced off my helmet into Stefan Diggs's hands. Screenshot right there, Madden 19 in a nutshell. My defender underneath, you can see I'm holding Y. The play ball icon is up above my head. I have the inside positioning. I jump the route. Deion Jones does not react. The ball bounces off my helmet into the hands of Stefan Diggs, who's running the slant route behind me. That is one of the more infuriating things in Madden 19, in my opinion, and needs to be patched. And now the fifth thing that I think needs to be patched, and it's not even something gameplay related, but the leaderboards are god awful. If you look at the Mutt leaderboards and the Reg Team leaderboards, I mean, just look at this Vapor Trail versus Problem. Problem has six less wins and 136 less losses, and he's behind him. Like, Problem could go six and 137 over his next 143 games have the same record as Vapor Trail and probably be in the same spot. Like, losses just don't count for anything. All it is is volume. All it is is how many games can you play. 
it doesn't reward being good at the game at all all it rewards is basically can this guy play 30 games a day like the game's been out for 11 days at this point it's august 18th the game came out on august 7th this guy's played over 400 games like it's there's no rhyme or reason to the algorithm all it is is based off of volume how many games can you play people don't even care how many games they lose anymore because they know as long as they just play enough games and win a few of them they're gonna get ranked high so it just takes all the fun out the game there's nothing to play for really because all it is is about how many wins you have it might as well not even be the top 100 it might as well just be a list of the people with the most wins in the game and now this is on the reg side i've been playing regs this year mainly because i don't really have the time or the money to invest into mutt to get a competitive team together uh, but this is regs so this guy's in the top 175 and 64 i'm 40 and 4 and so this is basically saying over my next however many games, if I were to go 35, if I were to win 35 games and lose 60 of them, then I would climb up and I would have the same record as this guy and I'd be in the top 100, which makes zero sense. If I lose twice as many games as I win, I shouldn't be moving up on the leaderboards, but that's what's happening because losses don't count for anything. It's just really, really annoying. They really need to overlook their ranking algorithm because it just takes the fun out of the game, but that's my fifth thing that i think should be patched will i think do i think it'll be patched probably not but i just figured i'd put it on the list but that's gonna do it for this video guys the five things i think need to be patched in madden 19 as always thank you so much for watching and until next time take it easy